begin to work through us uh, this evening uh, as we come together and pray. And we ask a special welcome to Father Pat McGrath, who is with us tonight. And so we begin. O oh God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. God, our hope and our shield, you are our constant protector. When the concerns of the world are too much to bear, you offer us your hand to help us through difficulties. May our faith never be shaken. In times of worry and anxiety, remind us of your great love and keep us safe and focused on the day where light will prevail and darkness will be turned into the brilliant rays of healing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I lift my soul to you. Truth and teach me 
Your ways are good and just. You find the lost. You lead the humble with righteousness. You help the poor to find the Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you constantly remind us of the beauty all around us, the beauty of sound, color, light, and community. Continue to teach us ways to grow and connect with one another, whether it be through virtual choir windows or through the ever evolving possibility and hope of in-person connection. Always teach us the way and show us the path to your side and always give us the strength and perseverance to lift our souls and our voices to you, even in times of struggle or uncertainty. We ask this prayer in the sure and certain hope of your name. Amen. Old St. Patrick's has been a tremendous grace and blessing in my life. Uh, and in a particular way, the music ministry of Old St. Patrick's has been something that has shaped me as a priest, shaped how I preside and pray with the community. I think it's shaped me as a companion of Jesus. And so I appreciate the opportunity first and most especially simply to say thank you um, to you and to so many others who have brought life to the music, to the song that is the prayer of old St. Patrick's. Uh, it is a tremendous grace and I am grateful and I get to speak for lots of people whose hearts have been touched by the prayer of, uh, that comes through the song and the music that you provide. I could give you dozens, maybe hundreds of examples of that grace that I've experienced through the music at Old St. Pat's, but I'm just going to offer you two tonight. The first was back in 2006 at my ordination. I was ordained at Old St. Pat's, the first ordination in the history of Old St. Patrick's Church. Um, and it was an exceptionally hot July day in Chicago, record heat kind of day. And it had been a busy Saturday at Old St. Pat's and the ordination was at 7.30 in the evening. And after a day of weddings and all the rest that fills a normal Saturday at Old St. Pat's, we packed the church to pray together in this ordination rite. And there's a lot of parts of an ordination rite which are beautiful and special, but I recall uh, very vividly the the litany of the saints that is sung as the ordinan lays down face down in the center aisle of the church in a gesture of humility and um, uh, surrender of one's life. And I remember walking down the aisle and putting my face on the floor of old St. Patrick's and being so grateful for how cool that marble terrazzo was on this day and just sort of resting my cheeks and feeling my body heave as I was breathing heavy, so nervous about what was happening that day. And the music began. And I think it was Becker's Litany of the Saints that was being sung. Laura, I still remember hearing your voice in that. And the names of saints are prayed aloud and invoked and I could hear voices that I knew in the choir. 
And I could hear voices in the pews nearby and I could pick out a few of them, some people I knew, even my father trying to sing along. And I could feel the tears coming out of my eyes, hitting the floor of the, the aisle at the church as those saint names were invoked. And as the communion of saints sang together there and everywhere. And that niche above the choir was very full that day. It was simply beautiful. A second example and maybe less dramatic and profound is any time that you sing Psalm 34 and you get to the line, for God has been so good to me. It always brings tears to my eyes and I can't finish singing it with you. The heart of my prayer in my entire life has really been a prayer of gratitude because I do recognize how generous God has been to me and how good God has been to me. And a grace like being in this community and being able to pray there, well, it does move me deeply. And to hear you sing and lead us in those words of the psalmist, for God has been so good to me, taste and see, taste and see. I am grateful for the beauty you've shared and the beauty you've created. I've been thinking a lot about beauty in recent years. One reason is I'm trying to build a giant performing arts center on this campus. And so I talk a lot about beauty these days, we're close. But I think a lot about what beauty is and how it works in our life and in our world. The church, you know, in its tradition talks about three transcendentals, truth, goodness, and beauty, almost pathways to God and a deep experience of God. In recent years, some preachers and good thinkers in the life of the church have said the, the problem of the church in recent history has been that too often we lead with truth. We sort of pound home the message of the truth and we sort of drive it into people's hearts and in their faces and they, they walk away. Maybe it's time to lead with beauty, they've wondered out loud. Maybe it's time to start with that transcendental. Instead of a lecture on the point of our lives or how to live, I'd much rather, much rather walk you through the Sistine Chapel, say nothing, take it all in, then walk outside to a piazza, get a good glass of Barolo and say, so what are you thinking? So what did that do to you? How did that scene touch you? What does it say about meaning and purpose? Beauty has a power that can transform us and teach us, a power that can gather us and make us community and help give voice to the most essential things and the most difficult things. Not surprisingly, Pope Francis writes a lot about beauty. And if you go further back to his days as the Cardinal Archbishop in Argentina, he began at some point in a pivot in his spiritual life to write a lot more and speak a lot more about beauty. He wrote things like, beauty is the eruption of the divine in human life. That our quest for beauty, Francis wrote, our human quest for beauty is a sign that humanity is seeking its source. When you sing, when we sing together, when we make beautiful music and worship, we're seeking our source, Francis says. We're trying to get back to the root, to the source, the summit of our life, the God who gives us the breath to sing the songs, who gives us the imagination and the creativity to be beautiful and to share beauty. Francis concludes his thoughts on beauty by saying there are three movements when we're talking about beauty, wonder, discovery, and sharing. That an encounter, an encuentro, as he likes to say, that a church is all about encounter, encounter with each other, encounter with God, that the encounter with beauty leads to wonder that leads to discovery, that leads to sharing and connection. And the grace of the beauty sustains us and draws us closer to the source, 
the one we seek. Dorothy Day loved the writings of Dostoevsky. And she liked in particular the brothers Karamazov. And there's a line in that novel where in dialogue it's spoken that the world will be saved by beauty. Do you really believe that? The question is posed by Dostoevsky. The world will be saved by beauty. And Dorothy Day loved that line. And in the grittiness of her works of mercy at the Catholic worker in New York and wherever she went, in the broken lives that were with her and in front of her every day, she saw something beautiful. And she would testify that God was saving the world in those moments of love and works of mercy, that there was something beautiful in the faces of the broken ones, that beauty would ultimately save us. I pray that Dostoevsky is right. I've gotten a taste of it in the beauty I've experienced in my life at Old St. Pat's and in so many other places. I thank God for the beauty that you create that draws us in and points us to our source. And I pray that all of us, and especially those most in need this night, might know that truth, that God, that God's beauty will in fact save us. Amen.
With grateful hearts, let us confidently place our trust in God now as we lay our prayers before the one who gives us what we hope and need. Rogamos, oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. Derogamos, oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, God of our hope, for thoughtful, inspired, and right judgment for our country's leadership. We pray. Derogamos, oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. First responders and healthcare workers, providers of essential services, educators and families of school children, in and with their restlessness, we pray. Derogamos, oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude for music ministers who have said yes to creating beauty in creative and hopeful ways, that they continue to nourish those around them with the goodness of God's music. We pray. Derogamos oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. For those hurting from our divisive culture, that we may hear the voices of unity as collectively we pray for God's everlasting mercy and peace. We pray. Derogamos oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up tonight those who struggle with mental health. May they dwell in the shelter of the Lord lifted up by the healing presence of each of us. We pray. Derogamos oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in our community and church, that a shared sense of truth guide their actions. And for all those who suffer from human-made pandemics of racism, exclusion, and intolerance, we pray. Derogamos oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of healing from isolation or illness, and for those undergoing medical treatments, make us whole again. We pray. Derogamos oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they dwell always in the house of the Lord God and remain in God's loving arms. We remember tonight, especially those in our OSP community, and for all those we hold close in our hearts. We pray. Derogamos oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we give voice to now, please use the chat window to lift up your own personal prayers. We remember in a special way to pray for Amanda from Harmony, Hope and Healing. Um, you might have remembered that she contracted COVID a couple of months ago. Um, she's been in an induced coma since after Christmas and is now on a waiting list for a double lung transplant. For healing, for Amanda, we pray. And a message, a prayer from Lynn that God will bless her niece, Dr. Sarah Cunningham as she becomes Vice President for Student Development at St. Louis University for a good year and many more to come for Dr. Sarah. For the repose of the soul of Buddy Hines. We pray for 
Elizabeth's son, son-in-law, Alan, who is in the hospital with pneumonia. We pray for healing for Alan. In a special way, we'd like to pray for um, God to bless Joe McCarthy. And we pray for a, a dear friend of Nancy's, her dear friend, Ann Pierce, who is nearing the end of her cancer journey. And we pray tonight in thanksgiving for the life of Sister Rita Moriarty. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. We pray tonight for those feeling overwhelmed by emotions, their fears, their anger, their grief. Give them comfort, Lord. And we remember in a special way, Carol Donovan, a former choir member whose mother passed away just recently. And Jim and Mary remind us for a special thanks to God for the good news about COVID vaccines that have helped um, and have been distributed to so many in these past few days that the rollout continue more and more smoothly and more and more people will become vaccinated. For these and all the prayers that we hold in the silences of our hearts, we pray. Te rogamos oyenos, Lord, hear our prayer. In gathering uh, all of our joys and our challenges, our hopes and our fears, let us sing together as one the prayer that Jesus has taught. to everyone for helping uh, lead us in prayer tonight and, and thanks to Pat McGrath for sharing your experiences and, um, and your prayer with us that beauty lead us to our source and to who we seek and certainly the notion of sharing wondering and discovery uh, but especially sharing in, in these days so thank you for those reminders and those prayers after our closing blessing we'll have our closing song and then a chance to uh, just share a few more announcements and, and chat with each other. So let us bow our heads now and pray for God's blessing. And may God, whose song is always in our hearts, bless us and keep us and forever sing through us this night. Amen. 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 May Jesus Christ, God's Son, protect us and guide us along the right path as we go forth into the night. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit continue to connect us through the beautiful music that we make and that we sing throughout all of our days and all of our nights. Amen. Amen. And may God bless us and send us forth this night, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen.
nature of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light, Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of ear and eye, for the heart and mind's delight, for the mystic harmony, linking sense to sound and sight. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Peace to all of you this night. Peace and cheers. Thank you for being with us. Um, thanks for uh, those that contributed to Lift Every Voice. It's sounding great so far. Um, we're going to move on to uh, Lord Make Me an Instrument, another um, Roger Holland piece. And so we'll have a little rehearsal for that on Thursday. That one's got a few tricks to it. And then we'll do another rehearsal for that on March 18th to go through some of those tricks. Um, yeah, I would encourage you all to check out the Chef's Kitchen. I was able to, uh, I was there last night and um, sampled some. I think that might have been what spurred on the soda bread recipe error because Catherine was there and she made it correctly, I think. Um, but that'll be, that'll be a really fun thing, a really fun thing for us to do. Um, and if you haven't um, been able to see Broadway at Adams yet, I encourage you to go check it out. It's oldstpats.org slash BOA. And there's an opportunity to still donate um, to the Community Firehouse Arts Center from there and Harmony, Hope, and Healing. Um, that's the organization that Amanda helps run with Sophie that, that Laura helped us pray for earlier. So um, that's that's all I got. I'm happy to uh, let you all unmute yourself and, and chat away or go have dinner or whatever it is. But um, special thanks to you, um, Father Pat McGrath. Uh, for being with us. Always a pleasure. My, my privilege. So nice to be with you. Thanks for including me. It's a beautiful prayer. Thank you. Okay, Mark, I don't know if you have time, but I'm just dying to find out how that You Can't Stop the Beat was produced. I mean, <laughs> who had the idea? How did you coordinate all that? I mean, it was unbelievable. It was just so, so good. <laughs> uh, Thank you. It was really great. It was we, the idea kind of came from Megan and from Genevieve and um, a lot of the direction came from wow. them. Some of it was um, just spur of the moment, good artistry and uh, people having fun. And some of it was pretty well scripted. Um, but I will say yeah, I like people like the scenes of, from Sutton Bay. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> I, 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 I knew where you were. <laughs> People worked really hard on that one, and, uh, <laughs> and it took a lot to bring it together. So I'm glad it was enjoyable. It was wonderful night. Yeah, it was great. It was amazing. It's fun to watch that one and like follow someone different every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Sign yourself up to watch it 18 times. <laughs> I definitely need to see it at least once more, if not twice more. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I, the interviews were really great. I I yeah. really um, I really love that part of it this year. You know, um, you guys just being vulnerable and just being very honest and um, what draws you to the group. Um, I really like that. So thanks for doing that for us. Very great night. Uh, I'm anxious to see it. Mm. Can't Thank believe we missed watching. that email. Thank you. That's okay, Cash. It'll be there. I know, but I wanted Watch to see it with everybody else. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. <laughs> People are still watching it. It's okay. Watch party with cash. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Do it again. Tomorrow at 7.30. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> maybe a matinee. Bring your own Zoom. <laughs> So I, I have a couple. I have a couple of photos to share. I don't know whether or not you'll be able to see them, but this one is for Father McGrath. Oh. This is the grandson. This is TJ's son. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Oh, nice. um, so as we have called it lunch with Logan on Friday afternoon, so we go over and we're we're with him during the day. He's big. So, yeah, he's very nice. That's, that's TJ, and then this one. This one is for Cash. Wherever well, she is. I am okay. here. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. A number of years ago, we did a Shamsa where Cash could not be there. There were a number of people who couldn't <laughs> be there. So I found photos of the people who were missing in action, and they became part of the group photos that we always take. I remember this. <laughs> and for some reason, this one has never left my choir fold. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> gosh. So. I'm gonna have to borrow that for when I die, so I put that in my library. <laughs> <laughs> my kids will say, "Gosh, you used to look good once in a while." <laughs> yes, oh, so that was oh gosh, photo. that's my a great picture. Right Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. I forgot to mention <clears throat> during the prayers that I'd like to ask for prayers for my oldest granddaughter. She's my hockey player yeah. and has been doing really, really well, but she got injured. Oh, seriously. And there's something, <clears throat> it's not the tendons, but it's something that keeps the tendons joined to the muscles and everything else in her hip. And she has to have a very complicated, serious surgery from mm. which uh, the recovery will be six months. Okay. Oh. And she won't be able to sit for two months. Um, so, and she won't be able to walk for three months. Yeah, that's not a mistake -ish. Wow. So uh, it's, it's going to be a really big deal. And... Luckily, she'll have it done now, and then by the time the next hockey season starts up, she'll be able to play again. But she missed a whole year of hockey this year and just enough to get injured, seriously, <laughs> wow. in the end. So if you could keep her in your prayers. She's What's her name, Cash? Cora. Cora, Cora. Sullivan. Okay. I remember when she she's a great kid, and she's a four-point-plus four student at uh, – Oak Park High uh, in in advanced classes and honors classes, and she's uh -huh. you know she's really a good kid. But this she's very downhearted about this because oh, yeah. she loves the sport and she loves playing and she's a good player. Yeah. Oh, how old right. is she now? She's sixteen. Uh -huh. Driving. Yeah. Good <laughs> sight, people recover. Won't be driving for a while. All right. So anyway, if you could keep her in your thoughts and prayers, that would be great. For sure. We'll do. Absolutely. We'll I asked for a celebration. My grandson, who's 16, um, Notre Dame spotted him um, and have chosen him to be uh, a freshman there when his time comes. And uh, he's 16. He's a soccer player. You know. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yes. So, so we're all really, That's you know, awesome. thankful for, for everything that... Um, that's been given from from our Lord. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Congratulations. On a slightly different note, I want to applaud Mark on his technical capabilities, his <laughs> amazing technical abilities. What astounded me tonight was how he was able to get Dominic's cat from underneath the piano <laughs> to get behind Jane Dewey's credenza behind her. Okay. <laughs> I skipped across several Zoom cells. I was, I was magic. <laughs> magic. Excellent. I saw Tom laughing, and I was like, "What's Tom laughing? It's a cat." <laughs> <laughs> could you could you hear my door neighbor's dog barking? Uh -uh. No, I could not. Good, good. Yes, Laura, but I just thought it was my neighbor's dogs. <laughs> so no, no. And and Michael, did I did I sing during one of your things? Did you what? I was distracted by the dog. No, you are you were fine. I was also distracted by the dogs. My dog. <laughs> it was perfect, Laura. It was a good team team effort tonight. There were dogs barking everywhere. I was the also dogs. distracted by oh my God. thinking I was singing the wrong words and it wasn't. So anyway, sorry. No, you were fine. <laughs> Pat, I was at your ordination. I remember sitting in the balcony. Um, 
I, I remember Amy saying. It was my first <laughs> thing I sang at Old St. Pat's, actually. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, I gosh. still remember the I'm My Orum tune. Wow. Uh, yeah. That, that we used for that. Yeah, that was beautiful. a beautiful piece. Yep. Beautiful yeah. piece. Well, it was fun working with you, Pat, to help you plan some of that music. I'm glad you got ordained. Getting ordained. Woo! <laughs> yes, I made TJ go that night because I said, you'll never see this again in your lifetime unless you're really, really lucky. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it, it is rare. I mean, it is, well, it, most Catholics mm -hmm. never see an ordination, you know, unless you're family mm -hmm. or close friend. Mm -hmm. you know. And it was special that you were able to do it by yourself. I had done, I've sung a number of ordinations at Holy Name where they'll have a number of young men um, yeah. making their ordination, but it was really special. Yeah, it was, it was. I didn't plan it that way, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like off the other candidates or something like that. It just sort of, it just sort of came together that way. And, 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 and we typically wouldn't do an ordination. I mean, our ordinations are in those days, we were always at Madonna della Strada at Loyola U. Yeah. And, and it was a year that it was under renovation. And so the church was oh. closed. And, and so the, the, the bishop and the provincial said, well, do you have, where would you like to be ordained? And I said, can we do it at Old St. Pat's? And that's, and the bishop was fine with it. And it was perfect. It was one of those weekends where I think we did, you know, a, a Bap a funeral, two weddings, and a baptism, and an ordination. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes. It, it was it was one of those crazy Saturdays. Yeah, there was actually a confirmation too. Believe it or not, uh, Wil Wilton Gregory snuck into the church between two weddings and did a private confirmation. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, on honest to God, it was like we hit them all. You know, all the bases. <laughs> Sounds like a title of a movie. Two weddings, <laughs> how many baptisms? <laughs> oh, Wilson Gregory. First Friday. First Friday? This Friday. Yes. Yeah. yes. Which is mm -hmm. this Friday. Oh, there's our train horn. <laughs> oh, that's in my background. For those people who didn't like catch the train of thought. So um, Cardinal Wilton Gregory <laughs> is um, speaking at the First Friday Club, which is on Friday. Great. Uh -oh. is there I think you can out? still sign up. No, I think you, yeah. I, I, you can still sign up, I think, don't. for it. Yeah. Really? Right. That might be a good outing. And it's free. <laughs> <laughs>